Hi friends, today is Monday, April 20th, 2020. Your assignment today includes your ELA lesson 11 in the ELA Monday folder. Uh, your reading target is I can discuss a story structure. Stories often have a similar structure. Authors organize the plot, which is the beginning, the middle, and the end in a way that will entertain the readers. In the beginning, the events include the conflict or the problem that the characters are facing. In the middle, that's when the characters are trying to solve the problem or trying to find a way to get through their problem. At the end, you find out how the problem was solved. I'm going to be reading a little bit of the Patchwork Garden for you. The story is pretty long, so I posted it on our Google Classroom. So I'm going to read about half of it, and then I think I might get cut off. So I want you to be able to finish up reading the rest of it on Google Classroom. Okay? All right, so I want you to be thinking about the beginning, the middle, and the end. So what happens in the beginning? What is the problem that the character is facing? What happens in the middle as she's trying to solve her problem? And how is the problem solved completely at the end? Okay, Abuela sat near the window where she could see the tiny stitches she was making on the bright green square of cloth. She smiled because it was the last square she needed to finish the patchwork quilt. Abuela liked to tell stories about when she was a little girl. Tanya loved the stories she told. When I was a girl, my family lived where there were lots of empty, empty land. I planted a vegetable garden on my own little square patch of land. I can still taste the fresh tomatoes I grew. They taste much sweeter than the ones you buy in the store, said Abuela. I wish I could have my very own vegetable garden, replied Tanya. But there's nothing but cement around our apartment building. All you need is a little patch of land and you can grow some tomatoes, spinach, and broccoli, or even squash and carrots, encouraged Abuela. Hmm, said Tanya. There's a little patch of dirt behind the church, but it's full of weeds. That's a good sign, said Abuela. That means the soil is soft enough for plants to grow once you take out all the weeds. So you should have already been thinking about what the problem is, that Tanya wants to be able to grow a vegetable garden just like her grandmother but she doesn't have any space for one because she lives in an apartment building and there's nothing but cement around the building. So now she's trying to think of a place where she can start her own garden. That's how she'll be solving her problem. The next morning, Tanya and Abuela went to the church and talked to Father Anselmo. It sounds like a great idea, said Father Anselmo. There will be beautiful green plants instead of the dry, ugly weeds. And you can take all the vegetables you want, added Tanya. Ah, said Father Anselmo, thinking of fresh salads and steamed vegetables, beautiful and healthy. Later that afternoon, Tanya, her big brother Carlos, and her father stood on the little square of dirt. Tanya and Carlos pulled and yanked out weeds. They used small hand shovels called trowels to dig out the bigger ones. Then their father used his big shovel and dug into the dirt. We need to turn the soil and soften it up for planting, he said as he worked. They also added some fertilizer to the soil to help the seeds and plants grow. When they were done, they took big cans of water from their pickup truck and wet the soil down. After they finished, they picked up Abuela and drove to the garden store. Abuela helped Tanya pick out packages of carrot, spinach, and squash seeds. Then they chose little containers with small sprouting broccoli plants and tiny green tomato plants. The lady at the register handed Tanya cards on small sticks with pictures of the vegetables she had bought. This tells you all the vitamins you will get from the different plants in your garden, she explained with a smile. The next day, Abuela and Tanya arrived at the little patch of dirt with plants and seeds and their watering cans. First, we put on our straw hats to protect us from the sun while we work, warned Abuela. Tanya was so excited she could barely tie the ribbon that helped keep the hat on her head. Now we dig the holes for the seeds and plants, said Abuela as she handed Tanya a trowel. It was mine when I was a girl your age. It has planted so many seeds it can almost do it by itself, laughed Abuela. For the zucchini, squash, and spinach, they dug small holes only about an inch deep. They dropped in the seeds, then covered them over with the dirt they had taken out. Vines will grow with flowers on little stems that will turn into big green squash. Spinach will cover the ground with dark leaves. Green vegetables are filled with vitamins, said Abuela. The carrots needed more work. Tanya and Abuela had to loosen up the dirt so the carrots could grow long and deep. Carrots are roots. We need to make room for them to grow underground. Carrots keep our eyes healthy and help protect us from getting sick, explained Abuela. Finally, they took the little tomato plants out of their small plastic pots tickled the soil around the roots to loosen them up, and dug holes just the right size. 
Tanya patted the soil around each plant with her hands until the dirt was nice and flat. Then she stuck the cards with the picture of a tomato and a silvery green flower of broccoli in front of the row of plants. Each card said vitamin C in big letters and listed more vitamins in smaller letters. When she was done, Abuela sprinkled the garden with her big green watering can. I know one more thing that needs a sprinkle, said Tanya, stretching her arms and hands toward Abuela. They both laughed as Abuela poured out the last of the water and watched little rivers of mud roll down Tanya's arms and through her fingers. Abuela walked Tanya home each day after school, right past their little patch of garden. And each day they would sprinkle the thirsty plants with their watering cans and pull out any weeds that had sneaked in between their plants. In a few short weeks, the garden was green with lacy carrot tops in a row, vines of squash curling on the ground, and bushy green tomato plants. Wrinkled green spinach leaves lined the edge of the garden and broccoli flowers bloomed. As the plants grew, more and more of the children and their parents passing by on their way home from school stopped to look and talk with Tanya and Abuela about their garden. I wish we could have a garden, sighed many of the children. I wish we had a place for a garden, the parents sighed back. So here in the middle, getting close to the end, it sounds like Tanya solved her problem because she found a way to grow a vegetable garden. She found a place for one. But now that the children that she knows from school are walking by and they see the garden, they want to grow one too. But just like Tanya originally didn't have a place to grow, they don't have a place to grow their gardens either. So now maybe you can make a prediction about what the rest of the children will be doing to grow a garden. I feel sad, Abuela, said Tanya one day. Why, mijita, don't you like working in the garden? asked Abuela, wrinkling her forehead. Oh no, I love the garden. It just makes me sad when the other kids wish they had one too. We'd need a big space for all the kids who would like to have a garden. Hmm, said Abuela. All we really need are little patches of land to make their wishes come true. Tanya's eyes got very wide. The sadness she had felt seemed to melt away, and she began to jump up and down. Over and over again, she crowed. I know where some are. I know where some are. It would be just like your patchwork quilt. All the little squares would make one big garden. Okay, so I'm going to stop here because I'm worried that I might get cut off and I won't be able to talk to you at the end. The rest of the story, like I said, is in our Google Classroom. It's called the Patchwork Garden. So just go up to your browser, click on Google Classroom, and you'll be able to log in and click on the Patchwork Garden to listen to the rest. Okay, but please think about the beginning, the middle, and the end. We know what happened in the beginning. We know what the problem was. We know that Tanya found a way to solve her problem. Now we want to find out how the rest of the neighborhood children are going to solve their problem, how they're going to find places to grow their gardens. Okay, so please, after you finish reading the story and thinking about what happens at the end, go back to Schoology and leave me a comment or leave me a comment here and let me know what you thought. Okay, have a good day. I'll see you Wednesday at our morning meeting. Bye.